So today we are here with Mike Larcher, CEO and founder of Outsourced. They have two sites in Manila and have been active for over six years now. Hi, I'm Mike Larcher and I'm the CEO and founder of Outsourced. It, the company was set up six and a half years ago and it's focusing on international uh, clients from Australia, US, Europe and we're providing full-time dedicated staffing. We also do a little bit of on-demand but our main focus is yeah, full-time staffing. So there are many advantages of outsourcing. Um, one of the major ones and the first consideration to most people is the cost saving, um, especially for people in uh, Australia, US, Europe, salaries are, are significant. Um, so moving offshore to the Philippines is a reduction in the local uh, salaries. The other, the other benefit is the ability to reach talent that isn't available locally. Um, for example, in Australia, 25 million people. In the Philippines, we have 100 million people. Um, so there's a greater uh, breadth of, and depth of people uh, with different skill sets and uh, to, yeah, to fill positions that you might be struggling to fill locally. And then obviously the benefit of it being at a fraction of the cost. Yeah, so I think when people think of the Philippines, the first thing that comes to mind is call centres and or admin and uh, virtual assistant kind of tasks. While we do provide those services, I think our niche and something that's great about the Philippines that a lot of people don't realise is the technical competence. Some really uh, amazing uh, web developers and technical consultants and network engineers. Um, and also, you know, in accounting and finance and there's, there's people here that are consultant level, you know, 10, 15 years, masters educated. Um, some of them have spent time internationally and gone to international universities. Uh, and these people are available in the Philippines at you know, a third or a quarter of the cost that you pay locally. So I think a lot of people, the first attempt at outsourcing is to use something like an Odesk or a freelance or some of these sites where it's more around, I'm just going to test the waters with an hour here or a few hours here or a small project. Um, while that can be good, it can also be bad because in many of those cases you're dealing with people who work from home, um, there's no quality assurance around them and there's no client services operation. Um, so you might get lucky, but it's not always the best way to start. With a company like Outsourced, we provide dedicated staffing, we've got the recruitment team, we've got ISO certified processes behind us, and we make sure that the people that we're finding are the highest standard and are tested and proven. The way to get into it without going straight ahead and saying I want 100 staff is easy, just start with one staff member. If for whatever reason it doesn't work out, we put the staff on performance monitoring and in the worst case scenario, if they still can't improve, then the, then the staff member is released. So there's really no uh, you know, lock-in period, um, there's no long-term commitment. It's all about giving it a chance, trialling it with one staff member, seeing how great it is and then growing your team from there. Yeah, so I think to get started, um, one thing I always recommend is, is don't go with a, a junior staff member or a, or a graduate. Go with someone who has some experience who can be the foundation of your team. If you're looking at getting to 10 or 20 or 100 staff, make the first employee someone who could end up being a leader of that team. It's also going to be a good uh, first step into, the, into trialling offshore staffing and outsourcing. Um, so I think that's where I've seen these, these kind of uh, endeavours succeed, is when someone starts with a more senior staff member. Um, the kind of tasks that can be done in the Philippines, really it's endless, anything that can be done remotely. It doesn't have to be just a virtual assistant, uh, which I think most people think of. It can be anything that you're currently hiring for at the moment locally. When I say that, it doesn't necessarily mean as well you have to let go of everybody locally. The benefit of it having the addition of the offshore staff, still have your local team, but grow offshore as well, is your profits will increase, making your, your, your business more successful, which in turn can mean that you may be able to hire more staff locally, thus helping your local economy. So it's not just about cutting costs and sending jobs overseas. In many cases, it's actually about increasing profits and increasing uh, the productivity of your business and creating local jobs as well. Sure, so the unique selling point of, of Outsourced is our attention to detail around quality, especially with the recruitment element and our ongoing client services. So we have um, over 50 client services staff here that are here just to make sure that our clients are happy and that the projects are running successfully and that the staff are turning up on time and that their um, performance metrics and KPIs are being met. 
In terms of the industries that we target, it's mostly contact centers. So we have um, staff doing te tele telemarketing and inbound and outbound. But the largest percentage of our staff are actually technical staff. And that's a real niche that we have. We've got some of the best web developers in the Philippines doing working with some huge, huge clients, ASX listed uh, companies and massive organizations. Uh, we've got uh, staff here working for them doing uh, really high end technical uh, requirements that I think some of the other uh, staffing companies just wouldn't be able to facilitate. In terms of our pricing, we're not the cheapest. We're not trying to be the cheapest. Um, I think you know, che you get what you pay for really in, in any industry. Um, we're really focused on the quality and we're looking to align ourselves with clients who are looking to build a real high quality team offshore that's going to be really reliable and exceed their expectations. So yeah, that's where we're positioned in the market. Yeah, so how it's priced with offshore staffing is we take a combination of the staff salary and a combination of our service fee and we put them together and it creates a monthly fee for the client. So it's a combination of a, a variable salary which we're going to help negotiate with the staff member depending on their skill set and demands and so on. And then our service fee which is a fixed price that is all inclusive of all our um, facilities and equipment and uh, recruitment services and we make it really simple for the client and make it a fixed monthly fee. Yeah, so when someone engages a offshore staffing provider like Outsourced, it's not just about a table and an internet connection, it's much more than that. While we do provide the, that facility as, as, as a standard, we go far beyond that and we have our recruitment team which has access, full ac recruiter access to LinkedIn, we have multiple job boards, we have tens of thousands of applicants already in our database. So we're a recruitment company, where the facilities, so you know, we're comparable to a, you know, a Regis or a WeWork and these elements where you've got a, your own works, workspace and we can contain it within a private area so that there's um, you know, a team feeling. We also have client services to make sure that performance is being monitored and managed. We have um, an HR team to make sure that any client questions around the, the payroll and uh, contracts and we look after all the government um, requirements We make sure that all taxes are paid and there's no issue with a client. All they have to worry about is telling us what job description they want and we take everything from there. We'll go do the recruitment, we provide the facilities, we have on-site IT to staff that make sure that the internet is always up, we have failover internet, we provide all the equipment, um, you know, the MacBook Pros, the Dell computers, the uh, dual monitors, all the, all the equipment that is required. Um, yeah, we've got internal uh, legal uh, representatives even to make sure if there's any matters that require attention. Uh, we can organize visas for people to uh, you know, travel internationally. We help clients with their travel arrangements and finding hotels and there's so much to what we provide. Uh, it's yeah, definitely not just a, a table and a seat. There's a full spectrum of services to make sure that uh, the client really doesn't have to do anything besides tell us what they want. I, th I think the biggest thing to avoid uh, with outsourcing and, and getting it wrong, and where I've seen it go wrong is, yeah, when someone starts with one junior staff uh, and doesn't really give them the, any attention at all, they just uh, you know flick them a Word document and and come back three weeks later and say, is the task done yet? And they get surprised if they you know things haven't moved as efficiently as they thought. When you think about how you'd care for someone that's in your local office on their first day when they turn up, you'd probably allocate at least a couple of hours to tell them. Uh, how you operate as a business and then you'll probably check in with them each day for a few minutes to just see how they're going or you'd have a superior that is is managing them and you need to really apply that same principle to offshoring you need to put time aside for induction and training and information about your culture and your processes you need to have a daily contact with them it doesn't have to be the, per the higher end necessarily but someone within the organization who can give them five minutes a day to ask them what they're going to work on and uh, answer any questions that they may have and do regular weekly and fortnightly uh, you know, catch ups or some sort of process that ensures that the person feels engaged and has an opportunity to communicate and is encouraged to be part of the team just like you would look after someone who's sitting next to you locally. I think the best way to, to learn about outsourcing and to see does it work is um, you know, speak to other people who ha have got staff offshore themselves and think about all the different ways that you can engage offshoring. I mean, there's, you can use something like uh, you know, the ODesk and just trial someone with uh, an hour here or there. 
you can uh, send a project to a, to a company and say, deliver this project for me. Or you can do what we provide, which is providing the full-time staffing, which I think is the most familiar to most people because they're used to hiring staff locally. All you're doing is having a different location and hiring the staff in a different office. But you completely control all the processes. You completely control the tasks that they'll be working on and the quality that they'll be expected to meet. So I think it is the most familiar way, the staffing model, where it's full-time dedicated staff. It's so similar to just running a business locally. It's just like having another office in another city. A great first step to take is to actually jump on a plane and come to the Philippines. The Philippines is a great place. And uh, you know, come to the office and, and come check out the facilities and see the kind of people that, and, and talk to some other staff here and see how great the people in the Philippines are. To really get that trust that this is a company that's going to look after me and the Filipino people are amazing. And I think, I guarantee anyone who comes here will have that, that feeling as soon as they, uh, they leave the office, that they'll want to work with us. The next step is uh, just giving it a chance with one staff member and seeing how it all works and seeing the success of this delivery and knowing that there's no lock-in, there's no commitment. Uh, we're here to hold the hand and make sure that the staff member is meeting the performance metrics. And if it doesn't work out, we just give the person notice and they, and they, they would be released. But we, we do our best to make sure that the staff that are hired are the highest quality, that during the process, we're here to help coach and make sure that all the uh, expectations around KPIs are met. And we're making sure, we're, we're here to make, make this a success for each client. It's in our best interest as well. The Philippines is a great place to do business, especially in Manila. The, Manila is, is a mega city. Um, out, out the window here, you can probably see there's some logos, IBM, Deloitte, um, we've got some, you know, Macquarie Bank, KPMG, we've got some huge companies in the Philippines that have, and, you know, Telstra and Optus, and there's so much trust here in the Philippines in terms of the competence of the staff, but also the facilities that are available. So we're in a high, high-tech area here where there's high-speed internet. We provide the staff with high-end computers. We've got MacBook Pros and um, high-spec Dell computers. Just, it's literally just like having an office locally. It's just remote in the Philippines. And it's definitely not uh, in, a, in a province, a bush area where there's uh, you know, blackouts and chickens running around. This is, this is a high-end city and we're, we're working with some huge brands here and the facilities are amazing. So the sweet spot for outsourced, I mean, really we can do anything that can be done remotely. So there, there's no limit in terms of what kind of positions we can fulfill. But I think what we do best compared to a lot of our, our competitors is that high-end technical staffing. So the hard to find positions where someone has tried to find a really good web developer, for example, and they just keep coming back with just terrible coding standards. We're the kind of agency and company that can find the best, uh, best web developers out there and best network engineers, uh, best programmers, best uh, AI developers. You know, in that technical high end space where I think everyone else fails, I think that's hugely our niche. Um, we also provide you know, accounting and finance services. Um, we've got guys doing equipment testing and um, there's no limit really what we can provide. Um, but yeah, certainly I think the high-end technical requirements is where we really stand out. So I think, yeah, one of the questions that people ask is, you know, do you take care of the staff? And the answer is most definitely yes. So we pay really great salaries and we look after them with private health insurance. We have monthly team events, so we book out movie cinemas, we do karaoke, we um, do beach events, we take people on coaches and go to the beach. Uh, we have you know, a huge Christmas party we book out uh, and we have DJs coming and you know, supplied food and um, we have masseuses come in you know, once, once a year for you know, a spa day. We, uh, this month we're giving everybody some fruit and uh, some free food to, as, a, as a New Year's resolution of a starting a healthy life. Uh, we also do you know, outreach campaigns to help the local communities as well. Uh, we definitely take a lot of care of the staff because for us, it's so important that they stay and uh, we have that long-term retention with the clients because they're investing a lot of time and money into the, into the staff so, and re we really want them to stay for the long term as well. So it's in the best interest of the client, it's the best interest of us and it's in the best interest of the staff that they're really taken care of and their health and wellness is so important to us and we really take care of them. So we have lots of great case studies of clients who have come to the Philippines and grown a business uh, and, and have really trust their staff here and it's become a core part of their business. Um, you know, one, one client, for example, uh, is Genesis. 
who came to us uh, a couple of years ago now, um, started with one staff, one became 10, 10 became 20, 20 became 30. Uh, they eventually grew to close to 100 and it was so successful that now they've set up their own office and have their own operations. They've grown to you know, a few hundred now. So one way that we really help is get people started in the Philippines as well. They may not stay with us forever. In some cases, we are so good at what we do that the client gets so much confidence in the Philippines that we help them set up their own operation. Um, but it, yeah, we're here to help the clients and it's in both our best interests that they grow a huge team and uh, see the success of the Philippines. So when someone reaches out to us, I think one thing they'll find refreshing and, and you know, compared to some of our competitors is they'll actually be greeted by Filipinos and they'll see the quality of the Filipino uh, talent throughout their whole dealing with, uh, with outsourced. So from the sales process, the, per the first person they'll speak to is a Filipino and they'll see their quality in terms of communication and ability to make sure that the client is given what they need. Um, so it's as simple as just sending us an email or going to our website, filling, completing the, the online form, or yeah, just jump on the phone and give us a call. Um, and there's, you know, we've got a team of people here that are uh, here to welcome clients. If they ever want to come on site, that's another great thing. We invite people on site and we've got our client services manager who can walk you around the facilities and make you really welcome in the Philippines. So yeah, some people will ask, why the Philippines? I think one of the best things about the Philippines is the people, the communication skills, the, the service-oriented nature, the gentle nature, the appreciative nature. They're just wonderful, wonderful people to work with. Um, for Australia, it's great from a, a time dif difference perspective. It's only a couple of hours uh, compared to somewhere like India, for example. The biggest thing for me is, is the quality of the output. So yes, it is a little bit more expensive than India, but once again, you get what you pay for. And with the Philippines, the quality of the, the not just the communication, but the output of what they're going to deliver it's just miles ahead of, of India. I've also found with staff retention that the loyalty of Filipinos, we keep them very happy, we look after their health and wellness, we, uh, we're aligning them with clients who are going to take care of them as well and they'll stay for many years to come. They're not going to just jump around for a cent here or there. It's really, uh, the, the Filipino people are super loyal and just amazing to work with.